they, 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 they become sort of part of the environment. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Laura. Good afternoon, everyone. And thanks to everyone who's come up and seen the amphibian and reptile conservation stand here at the top of the hill. It's certainly very popular at the moment. I've enjoyed talking to so many members of the public here today. Um, explains the importance of heathland to amphibian and reptile populations. Oh, oh, moss coloured oh, moss coloured yeah, yeah. Right, Salva, hold your hands up very gently. I may, if I may say so, I think that's jet codes are second or third gear, but I don't think. Uh, these guys so, uh, probably two or three times a year. Giving themselves away down there, he's a little guy. That's another thing that yeah, which is kind of hard. Run your finger down that back. Now, do you know what you've just done? You've just touched the dangerous end of a grass snake because the head is the safe part. The grass snake won't bite. What a grass snake does defensively is it's got a little gland next to its vent and it sprays you with a really smelly liquid. Okay, so, so the this is a very well behaved one. Well, this, this one sprayed me this morning <laughs> and is now yeah, smelling a whole lot better. Right. This is Rosie's shop for a while, so just give us the last couple of little tips. Right. Yeah. 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 They don't, they don't do much, do they? They just kind of sit in the rock. There we go. Look that way. That he's got as well.